This is a short tutorial about adapter A. Adapter A is meant to work with GE or Regal Beloit or Gentec 2.0 and 2.3 series motors. In 2010, it was probably the largest installed base of ECM motors in air conditioning equipment. It's the adapter that comes also in your Universal Zebra. So let's talk about how you actually do the troubleshooting. You open your Universal Zebra, you make sure that you hook up the 24 volts only to 24 volt power sources. If you ever hook that up to, two, to 220 or 110, it will probably destroy your tool as well as any modules that happen to be connected to it. So it's a good idea to hook up your power, your 24 volt power first and make sure you've got a nice blue pilot light on the tool telling you that you've got the right voltage. For this particular demonstration we're going to use uh, a UZEXT extension or replacement harness to make it easier to see what I'm doing while we're demonstrating the tool and the adapter. This is uh, simply a, uh, an 8 pin connector and another two feet of cord that allows you a little bit more room to manipulate with. Uh, you don't usually don't need one of these but it's also it's nice to have in certain situations. This is your motor adapter. To do this safely you disconnect the power going into your equipment for a moment. This type of motor requires you to disconnect the power harness first from the motor. This is your power harness. It's characterized by two squeeze tabs that have to be squeezed before it's pulled. Something that a lot of people don't know is that with these type of motors, this 2.0 and 2.3 series, they can be either the motors can be run at either 120 or 240 volts depending on if this jumper between the last two pins is in place or not. So if you have a jumper on it, you run, then the incoming power needs to be 110 volts. If you don't have a jumper, then the incoming power, the first two wires of this harness, have to be 240. Again, any of those motors can be operated on either voltage depending on this jumper. If you ever put 240 into any of the motors with this jumper in place, it will probably destroy the motor instantaneously. The reason why I'm discussing this is again because you have to remove this jumper to get to the little side clip that's on the connector for your circuit board going to the motor. In order to get your fingers in there, you have to remove that other harness first. So we're going to disconnect that harness right now from the circuit board and just leave it disconnected. You do not want to disconnect or connect either the power or the signal while the motor, while, the, while there's power coming into these connectors. The motors have capacitors that charge rather rapidly and if they're discharged and you plug in a live cord you're likely to get a spark come out of it and the spark could get you. So we plugged in our signal harness and we're plugging in our power harness and now I'm going to return power to this unit. My blue pilot light is on telling me I have 24 volts coming into the Universal Zebra. This type of motor, not always, but very often, requires that the F switch, labeled fan on your magnetic overlay card, be on at the same time any other speeds are selected, or it, it's, it's called an enabling switch. Okay? It also, if you turn it on, it will run the motor at fan speed, or the same speed that if your thermostat is set to on that the fan would run at. But if you don't have that on, turning on the heat speed switch in most motors has no effect until you also turn on the fan speed switch. When these motors start, they quite often rock back and forth 
for two or three seconds to determine the rotation that they're supposed to go at. They've been programmed to rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise, but they don't really know which way they're going to rotate until they actually start going. So you might observe that for up to two or three seconds. If you observe that rocking back and forth for more than five seconds, then you've got a problem in your motor. You probably need to replace the entire motor. Running a motor at heat, which uh, this is heat one switch, when we turn on the fan enabler, that motor starts rocking. This is loose right now, so you'll see that. That motor runs at a low heat speed. Not all motors are programmed to run uh, these 2.0 and 2.3s have up to five available speeds to run at. Fan only, heat one, heat two, cool one, and cool two. Not every motor is programmed with every speed in mind. So if you went to a heat two speed, it may or may not be different than the heat one speed. In this particular case, it is. motors have a ramp up and a ramp down time so that when you disconnect power going to the signals on that motor by turning all three of those switches off, that motor might continue to run for another two minutes. So it's not an unexpected thing. It's, it's, it's not undesirable. It's getting rid of all the heat that's in the heat exchanger. If you need to shut it off quickly so that you can test the other speeds, go ahead and unplug the power to it or disconnect the door switch or whatever you have to do to disable power to it. Wait until the motors completely stop turning and then you can re-energize it and test on another speed. We're going to be testing on a high cool speed at this point. Again, we always energize the fan with this type of motor because it requires that. Now I call it high cool, but it's not necessarily high cool. It's simply cool two. Cool one might actually be a higher speed. Again, they also they ramp up or they have a time where they ramp up from you know maybe 15 percent of the rated output up to 100 percent of the rated output over a period of a few minutes. This particular motor seems to have its highest speed on the H2 or heat 2 setting. I'm going to disconnect this so that you can hear my voice for a while. When you're testing a motor on different speeds, you won't always find that the manufacturer of the equipment adheres to what the industry calls a standard. H1 and H2 normally sound like heat speeds. C1 and C2 normally sound like cool. We found a couple of manufacturers, a big manufacturers, that didn't realize that they were using unconventional methods and they used a heat speed for a fan speed and a cool speed for a heat speed. So just because something operates on an unexpected speed doesn't mean there's something wrong with the motor. You need to at least understand how that manufacturer uses for that equipment the speed selections. Again, your basic tool here is to help you do one of two things. You're going to determine if the motor works on all the available speeds that it's going to be used with and with certain types of motors, X motors or evergreens, you may want to experiment with other speeds, other speed settings to see if they're better for your customer or for your customer's equipment. So that pretty much wraps up adapter A. Go on to any other adapters that you uh, have purchased or would like to know more about. Thanks.